Awesome. Well, <clears throat> so this is a sponsored talk uh, by MoveIt, uh, the company we work at. And we want to talk about Sidekick Scheduler, uh, which is a Sidekick extension for an, an extension for Sidekick. <laughs> there we go. So my name is Andreas, and th this is Jan. Uh, we're uh, yeah, we work for MoveIt. We're based out of South America and Uruguay, and um, yeah, we've been growing. We've uh, we've got people in Argentina and Colombia, and we also have uh, an office in Austin. If you're in Austin, we're, we're also always hiring, so uh, go check us out. Um, yeah, so Psychic Scheduler, that's, that's where it's hosted at. And uh, I'll leave you with uh, Gian now for a while. He'll uh, explain a little more about what it is. OK. Uh, so let's start with a couple of use cases that uh, we have. In 2012, we were working on a project that, among other things, needed to daily fetch info related to credit level scores based on financial data and apply interest to unpaid credit card debts. Also, on Friday nights, we needed to send week activity summaries reports to a couple of email addresses. The first approach, which we thought of, was to set up cron entries, which will execute raid tasks. Um, which will execute rate task, performing the processes that I mentioned before. We thought it was a reasonable approach, but with some drawbacks. So why not cron? The, the, answers, the, the answer to that question is composed of, because it needs to start the Ruby interpreter in each run. We, were, we are using JRuby and takes some time to start up and consumes a little bit of memory. So if we if we have a cron entry that says run this at, at 3 p.m., for example, it will need to start another JRuby process and consume some memory. There's no easy way to programmatically add, remove, enable, and disable cron entries. Cron's configuration will need to live outside of the app's configuration. It's not a portable solution because it relies on the operative system, and you can't start and stop the scheduler without affecting other cron entries. There are also some other drawbacks, like cron's minimum resolution is at minute level, not at seconds level, and deploying the app in a cluster will turn to trigger duplicated tasks when, in fact, you need to run only once. Despite those, those drawbacks, we didn't discard cron, but we thought if there was some other alternative solution. We found a gem in 2012 named Psychic Scheduler, whose purpose was to schedule psychic jobs at a specific time in the future. This wasn't what we were looking for, but we asked ourselves how hard can it be to add some cron support to Psychic Scheduler. Researching options, we stumbled upon Rufus Scheduler, which is a shame where you can use cron syntax to schedule a call to a block of Ruby codes. So we came up with the idea of integrating Rufus into, um, into Psychic Scheduler, adding that way cron support. That was in August 2012, and after doing that, we started using Psychic Scheduler in the project we were working on. In 2013, Morton was fighting hard to, to actively maintain the gem, so he transferred the ownership to us. And in 2016, we added support for rail jobs when Psychic is acting as active jobs backends. So how do we use Psychic Scheduler? As Psychic Scheduler is just an, an extension, uh, like applying to, to Psychic, using it is not really different than using Psychic. First of all, we need to declare a regular Psychic worker, which is a Ruby class, including Psychic worker module, and that also responds to the perform method. The schedule configuration is placed inside psychic configuration file at the schedule key. So in that example, we have a hello world job that runs every minute when second is equal to zero. And when that specific point in time occurs, psychic scheduler will push the hello world job into psychic. Okay, then 
you install the gem, of course, with gem install, or if you want to use Bundler, you just add it into the gem file as usual. Then um, we run Psychic as usual also. As, as we are here in the example, we are outside of Rails. We are requiring, we are telling Psychic to require our, our Ruby file that contains the worker class. And that's it, every minute, um, Psychic Scheduler will enqueue a job and then Psychic will perform the job. Okay, uh, there are different scheduling types as, and as we rely on Rufus, which is a separate gem, uh, as we rely on Rufus, different scheduling types are supported. The common one, the most common one, most popular one is, is cron, uh, which runs every minute and can, uh, it's a, the same cron-like syntax that you are used to the cron tool, the Unix, the standard Unix tool. You can use it in, in Psychic Scheduler. Uh, add type, which pushes a show once at a specific point in time. Every, that's it. Uh, pushes shows in a recurring y way following a given frequency. And in type, which pushes a show once after some time duration has elapsed. Okay, the main purpose of Psychic Scheduler is to push shows into Psychic. This is the, the main idea. Letting Psychic then run those shows as usual. So how does Psychic Scheduler works? When Psychic when Psychic Scheduler is required, when you require Psychic Scheduler, it hooks into the startup and shut down Psychic's lifecycle method. We will explain then uh, what those lifecycle events or phases are. Okay. Then at the, on the startup phase, uh, we fetch the configuration, read the configuration, and starts Rufus Scheduler, which is, Rufus Scheduler is just a thread that iterates over all the schedules and invokes each Ruby blog when, when needed. Um, we start Rufus Scheduler and set up a schedule job for every one of the, configura of the configurated jobs. Each handler in Rufus is, is responsible for the store execution info into Redis, verify that in case of cron and add jobs, uh, that show instance was not previously pushed, and finally push the show into Psychic, letting Psychic run the show as usual. Uh, while implementing this approach, we stumbled upon the challenge of managing multiple, inst multiple instances, <coughs> multiple running instances at the same time. At first, recurring jobs were meant to be run on one psychic instance, only one. And if multiple nodes were needed, only one node will run psychic scheduler, while the others will host regular psychic instances running shows pushed by the, by the single one. Support for multiple nodes was added later for cron and add schedule types. So right now it's possible to run multiple psychic schedulers, scheduler instances, having cron and add shows. Those cron and add shows will not run duplicated. All right, well, there. <coughs> Otherwise, I'll just shout and you hear me. Sorry, sorry about that. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about the future, um, which, yeah, honestly, um, the one thing that we want to do is we want to stop polluting the global sidekick configuration, because right now we kind of load the configuration in, in, into the sidekick configuration and kind of, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if sidekick itself would try to do some other stuff, uh, we could possibly have a um, collision there. So we want to uh, take that away. Um, we want to we want to get every and in schedule types uh, to work with multiple instances, uh, you know, <clears throat> so you can uh, you don't have to worry about that. And well, so so one of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to work on psychic scheduler with stuff that uh, is outside of the scope of just scheduling, right? So we want to psych that psychic scheduler just you know does that job and uh, nothing more. Um, also, uh, 
there's some test refactor that needs to be done and uh, a little code base refactor. Uh, all right, demo time. Now, I did uh, make a video out of this, so I don't, you know, uh, so stuff works. Now, hopefully, all right. So, um, really, uh, one, one idea that uh, we had in mind for, for the demo was uh, for, for um, so for our repository or open source repository, if you have a, all right, uh, let's not worry, let's try to ignore it. Um, if you have uh, some, you know, some issues, and let's say, uh, you know, you, the last comment on an issue was from you, and you're not really trying to uh, implement that issue, and um, maybe it falls into an activity, and, and the original poster maybe lost interest, or really. Uh, doesn't care about it anymore. Uh, we thought that maybe after a month or two, you might want to automatically close it. Um, so we, 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 that was the general idea we had, but since we didn't have a few months to generate all that test data, what, uh, what we did is to have uh, the invalid and duplicate uh, marked issues. So we created a, a, you know, a little uh, code and sidekick scheduler thing that runs every minute and checks those uh, those marked uh, issues and just closes them. So, so right, so right now you uh, go to the code base. I'm sorry if that's a little small. Um, you run Psychic Scheduler, and you'll see we have a cron job there in, in Qt, which is called Issue Cleanup. There, scheduled to run every minute, um, and then not in a minute, but in a few seconds, we'll see here that um, it will start running. It will find the issues just close them, and so that you also believe me, <laughs> we're gonna go over to, to, uh, to the browser now and refresh it, you'll see that uh, they were closed. And uh, obviously if, uh, if nothing is, is open, uh, the job will run and it will do nothing, so it will not find any issue. And so if we go back, and now let's say a few months passed and uh, no, one, no activity was on that issue, uh, you know, it will, will simulate that by marking it as a duplicate. Or, um, and the next time the job runs, it will uh, just clean it up. OK. Uh, so as a bonus to this talk, we wanted to show you uh, what it takes or what tools you have available to, to write a, a Sidekick extension. Um, so. You got these four events uh, in the li Psychic lifecycle that you can ha hook into. Uh, like John mentioned earlier, we hook into startup and shutdown events. So that's where we, so in the startup event, we uh, load up the configuration, uh, start the, the Rufus scheduler. Um, and then in the, in the shutdown, I don't think it does a lot. It just no, dies. Just clean up the <laughs> uh, Clean up the thread and, and die, yeah. Um, and then uh, one thing that I think we didn't display here, but when you run uh, the web extension, uh, Psychic Scheduler would actually have an, uh, create another tab for you, and it will show you the, the, um, the jobs that are currently enqueued, and it will also let you disable them. So you have, you know, without logging into the server, you can control it via the web. Um, and so to do that, you, you just got to create like a, a module extension uh, where you got to hook into that uh, method called self.registered. And, and then you can, with that app.get and put, uh, you can uh, put the path in there. And it's, uh, it's a way for you to you know, define actions and return HTML or what, whatever data you want to render there on, on that tab. And once you do that, you have to, in the initializer, I think, uh, you have to register the, the extension on Psychic. So on the Psychic web, you've got to register it. And you can add the tab. And uh, there you put the name and the path uh, that it points to. And the path really is, is back, back here when you do app.get, my x. That's, that's the path you've got to use there. And yeah, and you also have the option of adding locales uh, in case you support various languages. Uh, with Psychic Scheduler, it's just those four, I think. A little more, okay. So <laughs> we're just showing four. Um, so you can, uh, you know, support more than one language. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so this this uh, this example is is up on the on the move it um, in that URL. Uh, although if you want to check out the psychic extension, maybe want to check out psychic scheduler. Um, all right, now about feedback and collaboration, uh, since this is obviously an open source project, uh, we, it, it has had since, I mean, we didn't create it, we just, you know, took over in maintenance um, a few years ago. So over the, the course of the years, it has had 43 contributors. Um, and right now we have like six hours a week allocated for, for issues. So if you find anything wrong with, uh, with Sidekick Scheduler, you, you'll get some time for us uh, to, to, you know, to fix it. And as always, help and, and feedback is very appreciated. And as a last thing, uh, we have some other open source uh, libraries. Uh, we got uh, Rusen, which is a simple exception notification gem that uh, you can use for logging and sending errors uh, in any Ruby app uh, that you have. Uh, we have Rui, which is a lightweight rules evaluator for context-driven conditional uh, expressions. Uh, you can do some weird stuff with that. Um, and then we have Angus, um, and it's, uh, so the, the name for that was, was a real story. Uh, uh, in Uruguay, we're a, we're a meat-loving country. We like to eat a lot of meat, and uh, so Angus, you know, obviously is a, uh, a famous cow, um, a good one. Um, and, but it really doesn't have to do any, anything with that. Uh, we just thought it was cool. Uh, what it is, it, it's a REST-like API framework, and uh, it, it, will, it will run on Rack. So if you're already using a Rack app, you can use that to, to serve your API. And it, it already generates, uh, so while you're writing it, it kind of generates documentation uh, on the way. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can use that for RESTful APIs. Um, and then we have Fake It, which is not really something for Ruby. It's, a, it's an Android um, fake data, or fake but realistic data generator. So you can generate names, emails, dates, and uh, country names, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it will be fake, but it will be kind of real. So, uh, you know, you don't want to generate just, uh, uh, just a few letters for an email. You need, you need a certain format. Yeah, so, but that is for Android tests, basically. Um, yeah, and that's it for us, pretty short. <laughs> so the, the question is, how do we manage the, the second resolution uh, within the scheduler? Well, in fact, uh, we use Rufus scheduler for that. Rufus just start up a thread and Every every some between some milliseconds period, like I don't know, 500, I think, it checks, it loops through all the schedules and uh, asks if the scheduler the schedule has to run. And in that case, it calls the Ruby block. So it's it's not just like hooks with some events from the from the operative system. It's just makes a loop, it sleeps, loops again, it sleeps, loops again, right. okay. Uh, so it's, that, that, uh, that means that your Ruby block will not run at uh, 2 p.m., zero minutes, zero seconds, zero milliseconds, okay. It will run at, I don't know, 190 milliseconds, okay. It's not, it's not really precise. It's not okay? perfect. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what assures is that it will run in that second, during that second. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.